You know, one of the things that I've noticed since moving outside of the city and into a rural area is how positively vibrant the night sky is. When I look up into the sky on a clear summer evening, I can see far more detail than what is possible in the city. I can see the Milky Way galaxy, I can see far more stars, far more constellations, planets, all kinds of wonderful things. It's led me to taking up astronomy as a sort of a mini hobby the last little while. Even with my camera, one of the things I can do with my camera that a lot of modern cameras can do is open the shutter for a variable amount of time and so I can open up my camera's shutter for 30 seconds for a minute for two minutes for whatever and what that allows to happen is for all of that light that is up there in the sky to enter into the camera and it produces images that I think are quite stunning there's far more detail far more color than what is possible to see with the naked eye and so I find this a very exciting thing. And there's a number of photos in astronomy that have become my favorite photos. There are photos like the deep field image that was taken by the Hubble telescope a few years ago. Other images from other telescopes. But there's one image in particular that came to my mind when I thought of this feast of Corpus Christi, the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. And it's an image that was taken by the Voyager 1 space probe back in 1990. So this was the probe that NASA launched back in 1977 that has now become the object that is furthest away from the Earth that human beings have ever created. In 1990, however, they turned the camera the other way around and they took a picture of our sun. Instead of looking out into the Milky Way, they took a picture in our direction. If you look very, very carefully at this image, and you have to look very closely, there's a tiny blue speck, almost looks like a speck of dust in the image, in one of the colored rays of light that come from the sun. Well, that little dot is us. And the image has come to be known as the pale blue dot. This pale blue dot that is our planet, that is us. It really puts things into a different perspective, doesn't it? The fact that we are so small in the midst of this universe that is so incredibly vast, so huge, incomprehensibly large. This universe that bears within it the imprint of the creation, the creativeness of God Almighty. Really makes us, or at least makes me, feel very small. But here's the amazing thing. We believe and we know that Jesus Christ, who is God, came to us on this little pale blue dot out in the middle of nowhere in the universe. That close to 2,000 years ago, this God of ours became one of us, gave his life for us, triumphed over sin and death so that we could live with him forever. That's a pretty amazing reality when we think about it. But he didn't stop there. That one coming of his into our midst, his one death, his one resurrection, his one glorification, he is made present to us at every single celebration of the Eucharist. In the Eucharist, at every single Mass, this Jesus Christ of ours has come to us in this pale blue dot in the middle of the universe to be with us, to transform our lives, to bring us to himself. What an incredible thing this is. I mean, if we really stop to think for a minute about what is actually happening at that Mass, we would not fail to be, I think, quite excited and enter into a profound sense of prayer and service, mindful of this reality that God has come and done all of this for us. Wow. May we keep this in mind every time we go to Mass that our Lord has come to us in the middle of this vast universe. He's chosen this little pale blue dot in which to come. He's chosen this little person in which to enter so that we can be with him forever. The remarkable love that our God has shown. God be with you.